Hello everybody and welcome to the Med Ace USMLE Step 1 Essentials video series where we talk about very high yield Step 1 topics. In this video we will be talking about a topic which shows up very frequently on the exam. That topic is the cell cycle and the proteins involved in regulating it, namely cyclins, retinoblastoma protein or RB, and P53. As we will soon learn, the genes which code these proteins are known as tumor suppressor genes and they are extremely important because they are associated with the development of cancer. Alright, so let's get started. The cell cycle can be broken down to two major phases, interphase and mitosis. Interphase and mitosis can be further broken down to various subphases as well. An easy way to conceptualize and memorize the cell cycle is to picture a new cell which has just freshly divided from a parent cell. This cell will start off here, right after mitosis, because mitosis is essentially the part of the cell cycle in which the cell physically divides. If the cell starts right after mitosis, then it must start off in the G1 phase, which is the first phase of interphase. As the cell matures, it will eventually go through the S phase and then the G2 phase. The S phase always occurs before the G2 phase. We will talk about why shortly. Lastly, mitosis occurs after the G2 phase. During mitosis, the cell essentially physically splits to form two new identical cells. It is not as worthwhile to memorize the sequence of the phases of mitosis as it is to know what is exactly happening in each phase. Another worthwhile thing to understand is that before a cell progresses to a new phase in the cell cycle, certain conditions must be met. These conditions can be thought as quality control requirements. The process by which this happens is often referred to as cell cycle checkpoints and we will talk about them in just a minute. For now, let's talk about mitosis. As we have already mentioned, mitosis is the part of the cell cycle in which the nucleus and cytoplasm of a parent cell splits into two genetically identical cells known as daughter cells. The reason it is important to know that the daughter cells are genetically identical to each other and the parent cell is because there is another type of cell division in which this is not the case. This type of cell division is known as meiosis, and it is the type of cell division which occurs in germ cells, which is another name for sperm and oocytes. So remember, in mitosis, the daughter cells are always genetically identical, and in meiosis, they are not. Errors in mitosis can lead to one of three consequences. It can lead to inhibition of cell division, and therefore the cell cycle. This is the principle behind the anti-neoplastic drugs such as paclitaxel and vinblastin. These drugs create errors in mitosis which cause the entire cell cycle to stop and therefore the growth of the tumor. Errors in mitosis can also lead to cell death, which explains why these drugs can also kill cancer cells. Lastly, errors in mitosis can lead to genetic mutations such as aneuploidy, which is when the cell has an incorrect number of chromosomes. Okay, so let's briefly go over the individual steps of mitosis. The first phase of mitosis is known as prophase. The principal thing that happens during prophase is that the nuclear envelope breaks down and chromatin begins to condense in order to form chromosomes. The next phase is called metaphase. Several things occur in metaphase. First, the chromatin condenses even more to form full chromosomes. Next, the chromosomes align at the center of the cell and microtubules attach from the chromosomes to the centrosome which are located in the poles of the cell. The next phase is called anaphase. During anaphase, the chromosomes are pulled to the opposite poles of the cell by the action of microtubules. It is important to recognize that metaphase and anaphase are the phases of mitosis which the antineoplastics such as paclitaxel and vinblastin exert their effect. These drugs work by inhibiting the action of microtubules which are essential for mitosis progression. The last phase of mitosis is called telophase. In this phase, the chromosomes begin to decondense back to chromatin and the nuclear envelope reforms. While these are all important things to know regarding mitosis, perhaps the most important thing to know about mitosis in regards to the cell cycle is that once mitosis has occurred, any DNA changes or mutations which occurred during replication cannot be corrected. In other words, the DNA mutations become permanent.
For this reason, mitosis can be thought as an endpoint in the steps of the cell cycle because once mitosis is complete, there is nothing else that can be done to ensure that DNA mutations can be repaired. Throughout the cell cycle, there are numerous complex quality control checkpoints which ensure that mitosis occurs only when the cell is free of DNA mutations. The culmination of all of these checkpoints and complex molecular mechanisms is to ensure that no DNA mutations have occurred during the process of DNA replication. Okay, so now let's talk about the other major components of the cell cycle, interphase. Interphase is the part of the cell cycle in which the cell grows, replicates its DNA, and synthesizes new proteins in preparation for mitosis. Cells which are constantly dividing, such as bone marrow cells, gut epithelium, skin, and hair follicles, spend a short period of time in interphase, while cells which do not divide, such as neurons and muscle cells, are permanently stuck in interphase. Neurons and muscle cells, which do not divide, are said to be in a stage of interphase known as G0. So just like mitosis, interphase is composed of several phases. As we said before, it is useful to think as the G1 phase as the first phase of the cell cycle since this is the phase that occurs right after a pair of new cells have formed following mitosis. During the G1 or growth phase 1, the cell grows, makes new organelles, and synthesizes proteins required for DNA replication. During this phase, the cell is preparing for DNA replication. During the S phase or synthesis phase, the cell's DNA is replicated. During the G2 or growth phase 2, the cell begins to synthesize the proteins required for mitosis in preparation for cell division. Lastly, cells in the G0 phase are not preparing for replication but instead are in a resting state. This is also known as the resting phase. Cells which enter the G0 phase may stay permanently in the G0 phase or may enter the cell cycle and undergo mitosis. Now that we understand the steps of interphase and mitosis, let's talk about the cell cycle checkpoints. These checkpoints are extremely important and relevant because this function of these checkpoints is believed to be one of the major mechanisms by which cancer occurs. Throughout the cell cycle, there are various quality control checkpoints which function to ensure that various cellular conditions are met before proceeding with the cell cycle and ultimately cell division. One of the conditions which these checkpoints checks is that no DNA errors are present which can potentially be passed down to the future daughter cells. Remember, once mitosis has occurred, there is no way to repair any potential DNA errors which occurred during DNA replication. If a cell has DNA mutations or errors, these checkpoints will stop the cell from entering mitosis in order to give the cell time to fix the errors. If the errors cannot be fixed, then these checkpoints will cause the cell to die via apoptosis. This mechanism ensures that only cells with no DNA mutations are allowed to undergo cell division. These quality control checkpoints are carried out by a family of proteins called cyclins and cyclin-dependent kinases or CKDs. Cyclins are proteins which bind to enzymes called cyclin-dependent kinases. There are various kinds of cyclins and CKDs which function in different parts of the cell cycle. Cyclins are called cyclins because their expression and therefore intracellular concentration cycles throughout the cell cycle. You will see what I mean in the next slide. There are various kinds of cyclins and CKDs which function in different parts of the cell cycle. When a cyclin binds to a CKD, it forms a structure which is known as a cyclin-CKD complex. This complex then activates the proteins which are required to advance the cell past a checkpoint and ultimately undergo mitosis and cell division. So in this graph, the concentration of the different cyclins is represented by the y-axis, while the phases of the cell cycle are represented by the x-axis. As you can see, each type of cyclin increases in concentration depending on the phase of the cell cycle which the cell is in. Pay particular attention to the cyclin E. This cyclin is involved in mediating the most important of the cell cycle checkpoints, the G1S checkpoint. This is the checkpoint which allows the cell to progress from the G1 phase to the S phase. We will talk about this checkpoint in just a minute. Let's talk a little bit about cyclin-dependent kinases or CKDs. 
CKDs are enzymes which activate proteins required for cell division and progression through the cell cycle and its checkpoints. CKDs activate these proteins by phosphorylating or attaching a phosphate group to certain domains on the protein. However, CKDs alone cannot accomplish this. In order for them to successfully phosphorylate proteins and activate them, they must first interact with a cyclin to form a cyclin CKD complex. In order for this to occur, cyclins must be present in the intracellular space. Okay, so now that we have a basic understanding of cyclins and CKDs as well as the cell cycle, let's talk about the different cell cycle checkpoints. I have highlighted some of the most important and best understood cell cycle checkpoints and included them in this slide. However, you need to realize that there are many more cell cycle checkpoints. Of these three, the ones which you are most likely to encounter in the USMLE Step 1 is the G1S checkpoint and to a lesser extent the G2M checkpoint. In this lecture we will focus primarily on the G1S checkpoint. However, I will briefly talk about the G2M and spindle checkpoint. What you need to know about the G2M checkpoints is that it occurs right after DNA replication and before mitosis. The main purpose of this checkpoint is to ensure that any potential DNA errors that occurred during replication are repaired before mitosis. All that I will say in regards to the spindle checkpoint is that it occurs in mitosis rather than interphase. Specifically, it occurs between metaphase and anaphase. This checkpoint ensures that all of the cell chromosomes are positioned correctly. Okay, so now let's talk about the G1S checkpoint. As the name suggests, this checkpoint occurs between the transition from G1 to S. This is the checkpoint at which the cell chooses whether to undergo mitosis and divide or not divide and instead go into the G0 phase or the resting phase. This checkpoint is primarily mediated by a specific cyclin CKD complex called the cyclin E CKD2 complex and two important cell cycle regulatory proteins called retinoblastoma protein or RB and E2F. So what is the specific function of retinoblastoma protein and why is it so important? The primary function of RB is to prevent excessive cell division by inhibiting cell cycle progression. When the appropriate signals for cell division are present, aka cyclins, RB is inactivated by phosphorylation. RB is normally bound to a transcription factor called E2F, and what I mean by normally is when the cell is not actively dividing. Once these conditions are right and the cyclin E CKD2 complex forms, it phosphorylates RB which causes it to release E2F. E2F is an important transcription factor which upregulates the expression of the proteins required for DNA replication and transition to the S phase. Once E2F is released, it is able to bind the promoter of genes which code for DNA replication enzymes such as DNA polymerase. Here we have a graphical illustration of this process. So why is the retinoblastoma protein so important? Well, as you can already imagine, if you have a mutation in the gene which codes for the RB protein, you may have a complete loss of the function of RB. Therefore, E2F will have nothing to bind to and will constantly activate transcription for proteins required for DNA replication and cell division. As a result, cells with this mutation will constantly divide and as you already know, uncontrolled cell division is the principle behind cancer. The RB protein and gene were named after the tumor which it is associated with, retinoblastomas. Homozygous loss of function mutations in the RB gene that is, mutations which lead to loss of function of the RB protein in both copies of chromosome 13, can lead to the development of a type of cancer called retinoblastoma. This cancer is characterized by a malignant tumor of immature retinal cells and it occurs exclusively in children. The classic presentation of this disease is leukocoria or white appearance of the pupil in photographs. While this is the tumor which comes to mind when we talk about RB, it is not the only tumor associated with loss of function of RB. Many other kinds of cancers are associated with mutations and loss of function of RB, including bladder cancer, 
cholangiocarcinoma, lung cancer, and breast cancer. The RB gene is present in every type of cell, and depending on the cell where the mutation occurs, this dictates what kind of tumor will develop. With this in mind, this is an excellent time to introduce an extremely important topic known as tumor suppressor genes. What are tumor suppressor genes? Tumor suppressor genes code for proteins which function to control cell division and ensure that it only occurs when necessary. Mutations which lead to loss of function of tumor suppressor genes increase the risk of cancer by increasing the risk of uncontrolled cell division. In essence, tumor suppressor genes code for proteins which ensure that cells do not divide out of control, and only when required. So with this in mind, let's finish off with a discussion of the most important tumor suppressor gene known, P53. P53 is so important in preventing cancer and DNA mutations that it is sometimes referred to as the guardian of the genome. P53 in conjunction with other proteins ensures that only cells free of DNA errors can undergo cell division, similarly to RB. However, P53 functions in both the G1S checkpoint, the G2M checkpoint, as well as other checkpoints not discussed here. P53 works by inducing P21, which is a protein which inhibits all cyclin CDK complexes, and as we said before, without cyclin CDK complexes, the cell cannot progress through the cell cycle and undergo cell division. If a cell contains DNA errors, P53 will either arrest cell division until the DNA has been repaired or it will trigger apoptosis of that cell. Loss of P53 leads to accumulation of DNA mutations and eventually cancer. In fact, almost 50% of all malignant tumors have mutations in P53. So with that, we end our discussion of the cell cycle and the regulation of the cell cycle. Thank you for watching and see you next time.